Hello everyone, I'm Nima and welcome to my YouTube channel. This video is about caviar. There are a lot of misunderstandings about caviar and one of the main one is that all fish eggs are caviar, but that's not true at all. So in this video, we will be talking about what caviar exactly is, what are the different grades for caviar, how should we use caviar, what does it exactly taste like, why is it so expensive, and lastly, how to keep and store it. So if you want to gain some information about caviar and get the answer to all of those questions, you're in the right place and keep watching this video. What is caviar? So first of all, all female fish produce eggs and these eggs are called roe, R-O-E. But we cannot, we cannot eat all types of roe because some of them, some of the fish eggs are not suitable for human consumption, you know? And in fact, we cannot call any type of fish eggs, any type of roe, caviar. Because caviar is only the roe from sturgeon fish. Like that's the only that's the only fish eggs that we can call caviar. And the other types of fish eggs, we just call them roe. That's it, you know? Sturgeon fish are native to Black and Caspian Sea, and this fish can weigh up to 3,000 pounds, which is like 1,300, 400 kilograms. That's a lot. That's like, that's a big, big, big fish. And, um, Caviar is the most expensive uh, fish egg in the whole world, where one kilogram of caviar can go up to thirty-four dollars to $35,000. But for example, salmon eggs goes up to about five dollars to $800 per kilogram. So as you can see, the price difference is a lot, and some restaurants actually take advantage of this. They write caviar on the menu, but they don't use caviar, they use salmon roe instead. And this is not ethical, because whatever you write on your menu, you have to use those ingredients. And because most people don't know that caviar only comes from the sturgeon fish, they believe that it's actual caviar on this food. For example, some sushi restaurants, they write caviar on their menu for a like sushi roll. And when you see, you see that like they use like half an ounce of caviar and the price of the whole roll is like $28, $40, $50. But when you calculate only half of an ounce of like actual caviar, you see it's like $500. So it doesn't make sense. If you use actual caviar in, on your sushi roll, why are you selling it for $25 where it should be at least $800? You know what I mean? What are the different grades for caviar? So we only have two different grades for caviar, grade one and grade two. And they're actually called grade one and grade two, where grade one is, it has large fish eggs. The eggs are large. They're firm and they're not watery, they're like dry. And because of all that, it's expensive. And grade two, they're a little smaller, they're a bit watery and wet, and they're a little softer than grade one. And it's a little, it's, it's, yeah, it's a little um, cheaper compared to grade one. What does it taste like? So when you eat caviar, it's not just taste, it's texture too, like texture has a role too, you know what I mean? And when you have, when, when you're eating grade one caviar, it would pop in your mouth and it would have like a salty and a little fishy flavor to it. But when you have grade two caviar, it would feel like you have uh, like cold butter in your mouth because it just like melts over time as you, as you can understand what I'm saying. And the flavor would be the same, but it's just a little milder than grade one. How to use caviar? So basically caviar, you can basically consume it right off the package, like take a spoonful, but because it's so, so, so expensive, you wouldn't do that, right? But like caviar is usually used in appetizers. It's usually used with something else, something like a little bit of something, some other ingredients. And this other ingredients could be a little bit of rice, it could be crackers, you, you can have caviar on charcuterie boards, you can have it on fish, it's basically like on salad and it's basically a very good uh, finishing garnish for your food. And it's usually used in appetizers and um, yeah, you can basically add it to like whatever you want. But there are only, but there's only one rule that don't use some, don't use too much of your other ingredients. Because if you use too much of say, of the other ingredient, you can't really feel the caviar in your mouth and the flavor would be gone. So you basically use a little bit of like, if you're using rice, use a little bit of rice with a little bit of caviar. So you can basically like, uh, taste the two ingredients together. That's it. And if you're uh, looking for a substitute for caviar, because caviar is so expensive, if you're looking for a substitute, basically use salmon roe. That's, but, but like when you're using salmon roe, 
like if you're writing a menu or if you're doing a catering or something, do not do not write caviar on the menu. Write salmon roe or salmon fish eggs. All right, everyone, if you think you've learned something watching this video so far, please hit that like button down below so YouTube will show this video to more people who want to learn about caviar. Thank you. What to look for when buying caviar? So we have two types of caviar and I'm not talking about the grades, I'm not talking about grade one and two. We have two types of caviar when you, when you want to buy caviar, pasteurized and unpasteurized. Pasteurized caviar have less flavor. It's not actually less, it's like less intense flavor. But unpasteurized caviar have more flavor, more intense flavor, but the risk of foodborne illness is very high if you consume unpasteurized caviar. So if, if I had to buy caviar, I would always buy pasteurized caviar. All right, so a lot of people have this question that why is caviar so, so, so expensive? There are two reasons. One, because, because of overfishing. And sturgeons are basically rare now in the whole world and we don't have that much left of sturgeon fish. And second, it takes 10 to 12 years for a sturgeon to become mature. So it basically takes, so it basically takes 10, year, 10 to 12 years for a sturgeon fish to be able to produce eggs. And that's a long time. That's a very, very, very long time. How to keep and store caviar. So you should basically keep caviar in the coolest place of your fridge. And if you have unpasteurized caviar, you only can keep it for like two or three weeks if it's closed, if, if like you haven't opened it yet. But as soon as you open it, you should go through it for like two or three days because it goes bad very quickly. And what, what do I mean by going bad? It, when it goes bad, it just has a very, very intense fishy smell, which is not like consumable at all. But if you have pasteurized caviar, you can basically keep it, if, it, if it's closed, you can basically keep it for like two or three months. And when you open it, you have to go through it for like two or three weeks, which is like better. It has a better chef life. All right, everyone, this is the end of the video. Thank you for watching. I hope you learned something watching this video. And if you want to support me, make sure to like my videos as you watch them. Make sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel. Thank you. And until the next video, I will see you all later. Thank you.